There are more great holiday films to come on BBC One. Steve Martin. Pardon me? You know, it's not the size of a nose that's important. It's what's in it that matters. <laughs> and Daryl Hannah. Maybe you'd like some wine with your nose. Cheese. You have a straw. No, don't do I. Don't particularly. Roxanne, a man, a woman, and a nose on New Year's Eve. In 1985, Marty McFly drove a DeLorean 30 years into the past. From the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. Where his parents are still teenagers. Apparently your mother is errantly infatuated with you instead of your father. Stuck here. I can't, I can't be stuck here. I got a life. In 1985. Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. And Back to the Future is tomorrow at 5 past 6. Que bella luna. The moon brings the woman to the man. You can't see what you are, and I see everything. Why are you marrying Johnny? He's a fool. Cher stars in Moonstruck on Saturday. You waited for the right man the first time. Why didn't you wait for the right man again? Because he didn't come. I'm here. You're late. T minus 10. For a group of American school kids, space camp was the experience of a lifetime, like being let loose in your favorite funhouse, until... We have overheat on booster B. We have thermal curtain failure. Right, booster A, watch us, so we're gonna explode! What's happening? Andy, make, make them stop, make, make them turn it off! Light it or they're gonna die. A dream becomes terrible reality in space camp on New Year's Day. Jonathan Switcher builds dummies and chats them up. What would you say if I told you you get more beautiful every day? One day, something amazing happened. What's the matter? Don't you like your new scarf? Not especially. Shh. My name is Emma Hesseray, but you can call me Emmy. Something happened last night, Roxy. I really think I'm going crazy. I saw things I know couldn't have. Didn't I tell you? You're the only one who could see me like this. Mannequin is on Friday at 7.30. When you're a woman with a full-time career, inheriting a baby is not on your list of priorities. I can't have a baby because I have a 12.30 lunch meeting. Your baby has just barked all over my car. This is not my baby! Diane Keaton stars in Baby Boo tonight Bye -bye. at 9.45 on BBC One. And in 10 minutes, we've feature-length comedy in Only Fools and Horses, which follows the news now with Jill Dando. This is BBC One. It's five o'clock. Good evening. President Gorbachev wins the vote and gains more power. As the Congress of People's Deputies changes the Constitution, Mr. Gorbachev says, I don't need to prove I'm not a dictator. And after today's heavy storms, the weather forecasters warn of more of the same for tomorrow. The Soviet Congress has given President Gorbachev some of the new powers he's been asking for. By the required two-thirds majority, the deputies voted a significant amendment to the Soviet Constitution. The president can now enforce existing laws throughout the 15 republics by overruling national or regional ministers. The debate about giving the president further emergency powers will resume tomorrow. Congress has handed Mr Gorbachev the powers that he insists are essential to sort out the economic chaos and prevent the disintegration of the Soviet Union. The draft for his union treaty has been formally approved in principle. Radicals are decidedly uneasy about the extent of his power. Alexander Obolensky protested that he should not be leader of the Communist Party as well as president of the country. The Russian president Boris Yeltsin was apparently angered by yesterday's decision to hold a referendum on the private ownership of land, which his republic has already approved. Mr Yeltsin declared he was voting against the constitutional changes. There's enough power in the hands of one man, he said, even too much. During a break in proceedings, Mr. Gorbachev spoke to deputies face to face in an effort to convince them the constitutional changes are needed and to reassure those who are concerned he's becoming too dictatorial. I think I don't have to prove, affirm or bring additional arguments. I'm a person who is made of democracy. I think it is well known in the country, it's well known in the world, and I don't think I have to prove it. 
The constitutional changes will give Mr Gorbachev a whole new structure of government with a cabinet under his direct control. The proceedings, though, were boycotted by independent-minded republics who fear how he will use his new powers. Carol Walker, BBC News, Moscow. Gale force winds and heavy rain have hit many parts of Britain today. In some of the worst incidents, a supply ship sank off the coast of Great Yarmouth. Part of a church tower near Chippenham collapsed and high winds caused power cuts in Kent, Hereford and Worcester, Hampshire and Staffordshire. The Met Office says there'll be more severe weather tonight and tomorrow. Five crewmen were airlifted by helicopter from this chemical tanker which ran aground in gales near Milford Haven in Dovid. The tanker was later pulled free from the rocks by tugs. The congregation of Kington St Michael Church in Wiltshire had an amazing escape when part of the tower crashed through the roof. Four people were slightly hurt. The priest conducting the service was just a few inches away from the falling masonry. Thousands of homes were without power to cook Christmas dinner as the gales brought down power lines. And though the winds have died down, the forecasters say we can expect more bad weather tomorrow. In many respects it's going to be a repeat of today's weather. A depression over Scotland will have associated with it a belt of rain which will cross the whole of the country and in addition, and more importantly perhaps, will be a period of very strong winds with gusts perhaps up to about 70 miles per hour in places. And the adverse conditions look set to continue for several days. The Queen, in her Christmas message, says she's been much heartened by the almost unanimous opposition of the international community to the invasion of Kuwait. The invasion of Kuwait was an example on an international scale of an evil which has beset us at different levels in recent years. Attempts by ruthless people to impose their will on the peaceable majority. In his last Christmas sermon before he retires, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Robert Runcie, has warned against the glamorization of war. He said a shadow of war hung over the Gulf with the prospect of fearsome combat in which thousands could suffer and die. The Archbishop said prayers went out from Canterbury Cathedral and churches throughout the country to the young men and women serving in the Gulf. War could be justified as a last resort, but only, said Dr. Runcie, if persuasion had failed. We're often tempted, both as individuals and nations, to get our way by compulsion, to glamorize violence as an instrument for righting wrongs and for making or restoring peace. The Pope, in his Christmas message, didn't mention the possibility of war being justified. He warned it was an adventure with no return. But by reasoning, patience and dialogue, peace might be achieved. British troops and other soldiers from the multinational force are celebrating Christmas in the Gulf. They remain, though, on a high state of alert as a precaution against an Iraqi military strike. America's Christmas present to Saddam Hussein, delayed for delivery until at least mid-January, includes the armament of these Apache tank-killing helicopters moving out into positions where they will be able to take part in the sudden and violent attack that has been promised. For the build-up of forces, Christmas is a day like any other. For the troops on the ground, like Britain's 7th Armoured Brigade, it has been, and still is, special. Across the desert, Santa of Arabia made the rounds of units where officers were regularly doing sentry duty while the men who serve under them relaxed. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Among the Americans too, attempts by the authorities to mute the celebrations for political reasons ran into the determination of the soldiers themselves to have their Christmas anyway. But training for the expected war resumes tomorrow. Martin Bell, BBC News, Saudi Arabia. And a very happy Christmas to you. I'll be back with more news at 9.35.
good evening. Well, as we've just heard on the news, the weather, no respecter of Christmas Day at all. It's been wreaking havoc, blacking some areas out. And although the winds caused that are now dying down, there is a warning for later tonight and again tomorrow, nearly a repeat performance. Hazardous driving conditions caused by very strong winds indeed, gusts to 70, maybe even 80 miles an hour. That's going to cause more structural damage, more trees falling, and compounded by heavy rain as well. So that, of course, particularly on the motorways, means a lot of spray. At the moment, we've got mainly the showers out around the coast to the west. So a packet of showers is pushing its way across the Pennines towards Yorkshire. Could give some difficult conditions there for a time. But as we go through the night, the rain gathering, spreading in rapidly to western areas, those tram lines bunching up together, so stronger winds still coming into the west, at least gale force, bringing that driving rain into many western regions by the end of the night. Now, across in the east, it'll be for the most part dry, and here we could see temperatures dropping down in sheltered spots out of the wind as low as one or two. But it's going to be the wind that's going to be the most important feature again tomorrow. Strong winds everywhere. As I say, very strong indeed, gusts to 60 or 70 miles an hour, and not dropping down even later in the day, continuing to sweep that rain right across the country. It won't clear from the far southeast or from the north of Scotland, probably, bringing lots of these showers along, very squally and blustery too. Have a good evening. On BBC Two in 15 minutes, there's a tribute to the late Joyce Grenfell, in which Celia Johnson narrates a celebration of the great comedian's talent and life. Christmas on BBC One. No two people have ever been so in love so as my The love Russ Abbott love Christmas Show. I. Wendy, it's me, the little boy who never grew up. Not Cliff Richard. <laughs> I've saved a fortune this Christmas. I've saved a fortune, I. Because you see, every year, you always buy somebody a Christmas present and they always say, oh, you shouldn't have bothered. <laughs> so this year, I didn't. <laughs> The Russ Abbott Christmas Show, Boxing Day at 5.25 on BBC One. Life is the name of the game, and I want to play the game with you. Life can be terribly tame if you don't play the game with two. And you too can join in the games at 6.25, before which, for better for worse, those once confirmed bachelors, Dell and Rodney, now find their lives transformed by attachment. Only fools and horses. Stick a pony in me pocket I'll fetch the suitcase from the van Cause if you are the best But you don't ask questions Then brother Changing up the seasons and the tides of the sea But here's the one was driving me berserk Why do only fours and horses work? Rodney was still working with you. So do I. Your suitcase is giving me backache. And your moanings are giving me heartache. <laughs> I fought with this country. Did ya? How'd you get on? <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? I tell you what we are waiting for. 